evening. Today we are at REI's first day 2018. This is the 12th edition of REI and it's a pleasure to be at a stall which India boasts of its one of the biggest manufacturing setup that has for its solar cell and solar uh, module manufacturing. Today we have Mr. Ramesh Nair, CEO of Adani Solar with us to talk more about Adani's future plans and what they can offer to the Indian solar industry. Hi sir, how are you? Fine, thank you. Pleasure being with you. Thank you. Sir, can you please take us through uh, Adani's view of setting up solar uh, installations in India, which is one of the biggest uh, module and cell manufacturing capacity of 1.2 gigawatts, can be stretched up to 3 gigawatts. Adani is a, is a conglomerate basically in energy infrastructure and various other businesses. So energy is a focus area for us. And as part of the vision and in uh, conformance with the uh, vision of the Honorable PM uh, of putting over 100 gigawatts of solar capacity in the country, I think we have ventured out to put up the largest manufacturing. And we believe that manufacturing is a backbone of any economy and India needs a lot of manufacturing. So in line with the vision of our group chairman, uh, we have ventured on putting up this 1.2 gigawatt manufacturing facility for cell and module, which is the largest in the country, one of its kind, and uh, which is scalable up to 3 gigawatt. And uh, the most focal point of this facility is that it is extremely futuristic because we got, out of the 1.2 gigawatt, we got at least about 200 megawatts of monoperc lines, which is of high efficiency, and bifacial lines of 100 megawatt. So one third of the capacity is actually at high efficiency levels and uh, the remaining two third is on the uh, standard uh, multi, multi lines. How do you see uh, implementation of safeguard duty in the solar industry and how it can benefit manufacturers like Adani? Safeguard duty that uh, is basically imposed to, to prevent large scale uh, import. Uh, into a country and starts hurting the domestic industry. And uh, this duty has been imposed after it has been rec recommended twice by two, two uh, agencies, initially by the DG Safeguard and subsequently DG TR. And, uh, and it is very important because we say the domestic players should get a level playing field. Uh, and uh, in that, to provide a level playing field as has been given to various other industries like steel, this is a very important uh, move and we welcome it what has happened uh, in the industry and uh, it will definitely give an impetus to manufacturing in the country. Though the rates imposed are pretty low uh, than what was uh, initially recommended at 70 percent. But still we, feel, we believe it's a welcome move and uh, as we go forward I think it will definitely help uh, to f uh, further manufacturing along with the talked about manufacturing policy that's been discussed by the government which is almost at the stage of finalization. A combination of this would actually definitely invite a lot of in, uh, investment into the sector. Sir, technology is changing very rapidly. How is Adani, uh, I mean, uh, coping up with its with its technological advances? Fundamentally, in solar, the technology is on silicon. Okay, it's on polysilicon-based technologies. The only thing that happens is that the efficiency curve keeps going up. So, in line with what we feel is on efficiency, we already invested in uh, high-efficiency technology of monoperc and bifacial. As we expand, we would actually look at more of monoperc and more of uh, those kind of technologies. And even in the current technologies, we are continuously doing our R&D and our uh, work to take it up step by step, you know, the efficiency curve. So the whole effort is on taking it up and uh, we have a whole set of team in uh, research, development, and technology and product development, which actually will, would take us through the curve. But we have to be there at the right time of the curve at all times. That's the challenge of this industry. Adani uh, has one of the biggest R&D setup currently in India. I mean, uh, what prompted you to go deeper into R&D and uh, why you have invested so much? No, because we feel uh, in this industry, technology is very important and to keep on, to be at the right curve of the technology is very important. And if you do not hit it at the right time, obviously you fall behind and then the rest have gone forward. So at least now we have an edge uh, because as a manufacturer we are the only DNVGL accredited, we are among the top 12 performers, we are tier 1, 2. So we want to keep that edge 
at all times and we want to keep that uh, and that edge can be maintained only when we have a sizable investment into technology and R&D and we believe in that. We can uh, just backside we can see uh, it's certified for quality from almost all top tier international agencies uh, including TUV, Solabaya, DNB, Black & Welch, CEA, UL. So there is a sizable investment goes into getting this certifications. And uh, I believe Adani has never shied away from this. Uh, so does this kind of certifications help you in acquiring markets outside India also, sir? We have uh, sold sizable quantities. Like in the first year of inspection itself, we have actually sold about 50 megawatt into the US. We actually sold into Facebook rooftop projects also last year. And as we talk in this current year, we already we have already exported at least about 80 to 90 megawatts and we expect to do at least 200 megawatts plus in the various markets abroad. We are looking at various markets, obviously US is currently the focus market but we are looking into Europe, we are looking into Turkey, we are looking at into even Africa as a continent. But as we go forward we will look at wherever there is value we would do it. We are currently even exporting to Australia as we talk, yes that's a new market that we have developed. So. That's basic. That's the, uh, uh, that's a testimony to our uh, quality. The fact that we are able to export and then people are accepting our product very widely. Since you are one of the most uh, informed veteran in the industry, uh, we'd like to understand. Can you please give three suggestions to government so that our solar industry can boost more for more on this uh, the track that we have started moving on, sir? Like I have always maintained, every economy needs manufacturing and we all know that India's manufacturing GDP is just about 15% of its total GDP while China it's about 34-35%. And uh, at the end of the day jobs get created through manufacturing, long stay jobs. Uh, and uh, every country needs manufacturing, when you are talking about 100-200 gigawatts of solar farms being developed in the country, it cannot happen without a sizable manufacturing base being developed in the country and uh, the government definitely has are making a certain uh, strides in terms of furthering the manufacturing but it can move a little more faster like uh, things like MSIPs, uh, things like uh, uh, providing the domestic manufacturing level playing field through various methods, the manufacturing policy that's being rolled out. A combination of all these factors would definitely take the manufacturing of solar to at least double or triple the size that currently is seen in the country today. But it, you will have to, it's like, aut, uh, it's like auto sector, we always maintained, you know, how did auto sectors have all the manufacturing come to India? It's because they kept a sizable duty component initially, which, uh, which encouraged all the manufacturers to come to India and set up the shop. A similar strategy should be used initially to en encourage manufacturers to come into India, set up shops, there has to be incentives. Once that is done, then obviously it becomes part of the market. And then it generates huge amount of jobs manufacturing across 20, 30 years. And this, that's very important for a country like us. A high, large population of educated uh, yeah. English-speaking youth that we have. Yeah. Great, sir. And it, on top of it, uh, the forex saving, if you, if you bring manufacturing in India, if, is huge in terms of, if you start importing all the modules, for 100 gigawatt, uh, the import component can be in excess of 2 lakh crore uh, in, the, uh, in forex. So you end up saving a sizable portion of that if you bring manufacturing into the country. So that's also something we'll have to definitely look at. Also, we can control the quality with Indian manufacturing. Absolutely. A lot of control and quality is a factor in manufacturing because a lot of development that is happening in India, uh, I'm not being negative about that but obviously we have to be conscious of standards of quality on development also and they have to be clearly defined because otherwise this is a industry and this is a product that's going to remain for 25 years uh, yeah, whatever we manufacture we have to guarantee for 25 years and whatever developers are putting up also needs to be guaranteed in terms of generation for uh, this similar period of time so quality becomes very important uh, in this field Sir, I'd like to understand one thing. Uh, today we see prices like 2.44, somewhere uh, it was below 2 rupees. Is there any pressure on manufacturers like you from the developers to attain that kind of price points? Uh, obviously, a price of 2.44 uh, is a very aggressive price and it has certain assumptions and model prices. 
So there is always a pressure on the manufacturers to match that kind of pricing. And uh, for industry, it's always good where the cost curve has to go down. I, overall, uh, as a country, it's not a bad thing for the country. Uh, but then we should also be conscious about what quality goes in uh, with this kind of pricing. And uh, there has to be a good control uh, on the quality of modules that actually gets put up as part of development. One last thing I'd like to understand, sir. We have a potential of 750 gigawatts. We are running for 100 gigawatts till 2022. The, the numbers are huge if we com count it with number of modules. What happens to these modules once there is an end of life comes in for these modules? We do not have a recyclable policy. What's your uh, suggestion on this, sir? It's a good question and obviously we would need a policy for recycling because a lot of metals elements going into model making from silver to aluminium to copper to polysilicon and uh, so obviously uh, it's a sizable recycle market at the end of life and uh, we'll have to look at it on a policy level how to do it and a lot of countries abroad which do a lot of recycling a lot of value coming out of recycling so obviously that's a market we have to look at it thank you so much sir it is always a pleasure to talk to you uh, Thank you. We would like to thank Mr. Nair for taking out his time. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very much.